Hi everybody, it's Mark here again and today I'm answering your questions about anxiety positive thinking. We do love your questions, please, please keep them coming in. You can find a magic link below, you can visit the website, send us your questions, leave a comment and we'll answer them the best that we can. Okay, so the first question for today, does positive thinking work for anxiety? Now, there's a lot of debate about this and different people will tell you different things. When I did a little bit of research on this, I found quite a few gurus who stated that positive thinking does not work for anxiety, stress or depression. Quite strangely, as we looked at their information and went a little bit further into it, they were then trying to sell you a product that would help you to do this. So my view on this is we have a choice. We can either think positively or we can think think negatively. Positive or negative, most of us sort of do something in between and move back and forwards. And if we practice thinking positively, we're much more likely to stay in that positive zone much more often. Now, I want to give you a, a little bit of a story. This is an old family story. Uh, my parents, bless them, um, used to go out every Friday for a meal. And if I said to my dad, what was your meal like? He said, oh, it was beautiful. That was about all we got from him. But if I said to my mother, if I dared to ask her, what was your meal like? It was either too hot, it was too cold, it was overcooked, they changed the staff, there were too many children, the place was too busy, the place wasn't heated. And this would go on and on for about 10 minutes. And if I dared ask, why don't you go somewhere else? She'd complain, i say, oh, I'm not going anywhere else. We got the same sort of thing everywhere that they went. Um, whether it was the local restaurant, the local pub, there would always be something that the mum and mother looked for. And we know that we find in life what we look for. People who focus on positive health seem to achieve it. People who focus on problems in health seem to find them. So we need to decide if we want to think in a positive way or a negative way. And I've heard this described by a few other people. Some years ago, I found an amazing guy. He'd um, gone through a hard time in life, ended up almost bankrupt, loads and loads of problems. He started a little business and he found that positive personal development totally changed his life. And he called that old way of thinking of his stinking thinking. And I think that's so true. It's very easy that we get into that stinking thinking because we're programmed by media to do it. If we look at the news for the last five years, we've had Brexit, we've had COVID, we've got the war. We've just gone on and on with all these negative problems that, that is going on. And if we focus on that, even if we don't do it purposely, we start to look for the negatives all the time. So by moving into positive thinking, we change our physiology, we feel an awful lot better. And with regular practice, that gets much easier. Another way of putting it, and somebody who trained me years ago used to talk about radiators and drains. He would say there's only two types of people in this world. You're either a radiator or you're a drain. And radiators are the people who make us feel good. They smile at us, they give us energy, and we like to be around them. They're usually attractive people. And they don't always have to be physically attractive, it's just radiators seem to have people around them. Where drains are the people who suck your energy away. Energy vampires, time vampires, they'll sit and moan about things all the time, and I'm sure you've all met them. So the first thing with this principle is, do you want to be a radiator, or do you want to be a drain? And then the second question is, who do you want to spend your time with? If you spend your time around a load of drains, wow, that is a dangerous thing to do. We know with addicts who've got problems, if they don't get themselves away from those people who are using those unhelpful substances, it's very hard to do. But we also know that when we're in business or trying to move forward, if we surround ourselves by positive friends and family and business people who are doing something well, that rubs off on us. So remember that principle of radiators and drains. Who do you want to be? But you can choose how you think, who you're around, how you're going to be. It just takes some work and we get better and better with it. Another view is that negative thinking is not actually thinking, but it's remembering. So let's say we go through a bit of trauma. Maybe we have an accident and then we're always scared in that situation. And what's happening there, according to some experts, is we're not thinking, we're actually just remembering what's happened in the past. And this is where we need to think about something positive, where we say, I've got this, I can handle this, I'm on top of this. Think about walking down that road nicely without any problems. And that really helps. Worrying's the same thing, but it's kind of we're remembering into the past. 
The official word for it is future pacing. And we find this all the time with clients as once they get into that anxious state is they're constantly looking forward for what could go wrong. I'll never afford this. I'll run out of money. He's going to leave me. You know, they're not going to be there when I turn up. We need to change that thinking and I'll help you to do that further on in this video. Remember, we get what we focus on life. We talked about this before. If you focus on going out and having a nice day, it'll happen. If you focus on getting stressed out and everything that's everything else that could go wrong, guess what? We're most likely going to do that. Question number two, will positive thinking cure anxiety? Now, I dislike, I don't use the word hate, I dislike the word cure. So first of all, legally, we can't make any claims that we can cure anybody. But the word cure seems to make us think that we're broken, we're wrong, something's not working, or that we've got mental health issues. And actually, we haven't. The brain's working exactly as it should. It's just something has gone and caused us to get into that anxiety loop. So the way I prefer to look at it is we're healing ourselves. We're getting better. We're improving. I heard exactly the same thing with cancer a while ago. Somebody was talking about they were now at war. They were now at battle with cancer. And again, it's the same thing. Do you want to be in that battle, that war, or do you want to be healing yourself from cancer? And that's what we need to do with anxiety. So this is really interesting. Personal, um, sorry, positive thoughts will help with anxiety, depression, and stress because it helps us to get into a better mental state. I'm sure you've all had times where you've gone out, you're not in a good state, something's gone wrong, and you've really overreacted to the situation. And it happens to us all, none of us are perfect, but what was something small we took out of control, you know, we really ran away with it, and then maybe that ran away with us, and we have a row with somebody and it gets worse. But there's other times when we're in a really good state where something bad can really happen, and we handle that really well. And actually, the more we handle those bad situations, the better we become at it. I've seen some amazing care workers and medical professionals who work so well under pressure, but we need to go through it and experience it rather than keep running away from it. Now, the interesting thing about this is to feel anxious, stressed or depressed, we have to do anxiety, stress or depression. And this will upset a few people because they're not doing it on purpose. I'm going to say it again just with anxiety. In order to feel anxious, we have to do anxiety. It means physically in the brain, we're firing that electricity across those neural pathways and we're getting that same response, whether it's consciously or whether it's unconsciously, meaning maybe we've chosen to do it or maybe we've not chosen to do it. So again, by using some of these exercises, we can make quite a difference in learning to control this and get on with what we do. What does positive thinking do to the brain? Now, we do know, and I'll explain this in detail, when we say we walk down the road and there's some threat, the brain will fire electricity from one part of the brain or multiple parts into the anxiety center. And that puts us into that state of fight or flight so that we either sort the problem out or we get out of there. That's perfectly natural. It's a perfectly normal response. But let's say we walk down that street again the next day or we even lie in bed and think about that situation. The brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. And it fires electricity exactly the same. And if we do this again and again, very quickly, the brain can turn that into a habit where it's firing that electricity. And what it's doing is creating a stronger and stronger neural pathway, which just becomes a habit. And that's exactly what happens in the brain. Now, if we're asking how can positive thinking help with this, we're doing a different behavior. If we were to look at a functional MRI scan, it tells us all about this, about what's happening while we go into the state. And it can also show us the difference in the brain before and after dealing with these techniques and learning to handle anxiety. So doing positive things, whether it's you know, listening to something funny, watching a good film, doing something fun. If we do that in a good state, we create lots of neural pathways that keep us nice and healthy. But if we just focus on the negatives all the time and stick to that stinking thinking, it causes us further problems. Okay, next question. How do you use positive thinking to help with anxiety? This is a great question. What I suggest you do, a couple of exercises here, is first of all, 
make a list of all your negative thoughts, beliefs, worries, and even voices. Now, yes, voices. We all have voices in our head. I've never found somebody who doesn't, uh, especially athletes when they're being pushed to do things. But we need to be a bit careful not to tell our GP that we've got voices in our head. Unless, of course, you've got really bad voices telling you to do things you don't want to do. Then you need to toddle off to your GP and get that sorted. But typically we have them there. So get yourself a journal and make a list of all of these negative beliefs, worries and thoughts and write them down. Then I want to label that journal, that notepad, class it as that old anxiety. We never want to say my anxiety, this anxiety. It's always got to be in the past. It's something else. We don't own it. We're disassociating from it. Then go through each of those thoughts and worries, and everybody has them, nothing to worry about, and analyse them. And first of all, ask if they're true. So if somebody says to us, oh, I've got no friends, nobody likes me, we would ask a series of questions and say, OK, you've got no friends? Oh, well, I've got my brother. I've got so-and-so down the road. Ah, so you do have friends. So sometimes we generalise and we take things in class, and usually we find people do have friends. Go through each one and pull it to bits. Ask if it's true. Question it as much as you can. And then next to each one, I want you to write down what you'd like a different belief instead. So a, a regular one with clients is, I'll never get a better job. I'll never get a pay rise. And the truth with this, the more that we say these things, these incantations, the stronger they become and they become self-fulfilling. So if somebody says, I'll never get a better job, we could say to them, how could we get a better job? What needs to happen before we get a better job? And then clients perk up and say, well, I could go and retrain. I could do a night class. I could go and try something else. And it's amazing how we see so many people change what they do. If we say, how could you get a pay rise? They could say, maybe I could ask work for some training. Maybe I could become more valuable. There's lots of things that we can do to do all of this. And then make a list of all these new positive thoughts and practice them three or five times a day. So you could get up in the morning and just go through your little book of positive thoughts. You could put them on your mobile phone, go through them, and you could use it as an incantation. This is where you stand up and you say them out loud. And you can do that, you know, if you're on your own, if you're around lots of other people, maybe do it a different way. Just turn the volume up in your head and do it that way. It's quite easy to do, but once we work with that, we can sort those out. Now, for some people, we get really difficult ingrained patterns. This is where we get to the point where maybe we can't help people, but there are things that we can do. And it's typically we're working with a client and they'll go, ah, but, and they'll stop us and say, when this happens, I always do X. So a good example, recently there was a lady who wanted to lose some weight and I said, okay, how about we do some portion limitation? And she says, I can't do that. I'll buy a bag of biscuits and I eat the whole bag. So I said, okay, how could we change that? We get them to answer the questions. You need to find a solution. So one of them was, I said to her, how about you go to the cupboard, you get three biscuits out of the bag and you get some fruit you put that in a bowl, you eat the biscuits, and you enjoy the fruit. And she went, ah. And then she said, ah, but I might just eat the whole bag. And I said, right, stop that. You need to stop that straight away, that thought pattern, and replace it with a better one. And that could be an incantation of, I'm learning to control my treats. And say that repeatedly. And it's amazing that it seems really simple, but it really, really works. It could be you get a craving to go for those biscuits, but you go for a walk around the block instead. A lot of people with these problems try to just cut something out, but you've got to replace it with something else. And this is where we find dif dif difficult problems like that can always be resolved. So remember, you don't want to be saying to yourself, I can't, I always, my brain does this. And it's really interesting. Now, we've got a previous video about empowering questions, and these can be very, very useful. So once you finish watching this, hop onto our YouTube channel and find it. And please subscribe and like because that really helps us and gives us something a little bit back. The empowering questions could be that you sit at the end of your day and you go through what you've done that you didn't like. Give yourself a pat on the back for the things you have done, as we've mentioned in the video, but notice the things that you don't like. And then say to yourself, how could I have done these better? What could I have done to change this? Might be we knock five biscuits down to three. There's lots of things that we can do, but this turns every situation into a learning curve. And as I say in the video, if you do this every day, over 30 days, you've learned 30 things 
and for some people they don't learn 30 things in a year that can make a big difference look at your friends and family it is amazing that we have people around us that you've just got to mention and off they go they go into an automatic bang uh, I used to have a friend years ago who if you mentioned the word curry he had to go into a whole routine of how he made the best curry in the world and you'd see his friends around him every time he went to this loop they were off to the bar off to the toilet he just had to do this automatically notice those automatic loops and patterns around your friends but notice the ones in yourself as well a personal example of changing a thought was there was a time where I used to hate going to the gym um, so many people have the same experience um, it usually starts at school we go and start doing sports that we're not good at there's a bit of bullying we feel uncomfortable our bodies are changing and all the other things with being sort of a young person and I just hated exercise I used to have really bad sort of asthma type problems lots of health issues and sport was something that never came naturally to me but I met somebody who had a beautiful routine of when they went to the gym that was their time for self-care they would go in there it was time for them they would enjoy it they would switch off the phone and I kind of modeled that and that's where we take a great skill of somebody else so she would start by having a little sing song in her head I'm going to go to the gym and that would start in the morning when she was going to be making the food for the kids getting her husband out to work she'd then make sure she got all the tasks done while looking forward to the gym now I've taken that a step forward further you know, I've been down the gym this morning. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I feel better energy wise. But one of the things I love to do is I like to learn new things. And one of the ways I do that is I need to listen to something maybe a dozen or so times. That repetition really works for me to get things to cement in here so that I can get out and either help new people to do things faster, work in new areas I've not worked before. So now when I go down the gym and straight away I'm on that treadmill, I've got the headphones on and I'm listening to something new that I like to learn. So I'm doing two things at the same time because I find the treadmill and the bike quite boring, but I'm using that time um, productively to take something new in. We can do this in lots of other ways. Also to lift our mood, we could listen to some stand-up comedy, something that makes us laugh. Um, I love motivational speakers. There's quite a few that I've had from the past and I'm getting into now. It's finding some way to do this, to change that thinking. And it's just about finding some resources. We're all really clever with our brains. It's finding the right way to do that. With clients, a couple of examples. Um, we had a client who hated her job. Um, she came in and she mourned for about three quarters of an hour. And sometimes that's therapy in itself and that people need to chat and tell us exactly what's wrong and vent. And she told us about that it started, that she had a run-in with a manager, that she hated the canteen, she hated the drive to work, she hated that she'd be in on a sunny day when she could be out doing other things and she went on and on and on about how she hated the job we nearly ran out of time because then i shifted it and said right what is it you like about the job and she started off about her best friend sat at the desk opposite her and they had a really good laugh all day and that she loved at uh, break time when they went for the coffee that they go for a little walk around the block and she liked looking at the trees and the animals and everything else that went on and then she said and she loved the pay the pay was really good it gave her lots of holidays every year she lived in a house that she liked she could buy the food that she wanted and buy the the clothes and then she went on to say she loved the flexi time because if she needed time with the grandkids she could take time off and do all of this and by the time we finished and i was exhausted we had a much longer list of the pros than the cons and then i went back and said okay let's go back to the cons which ones of these really bother you and it was one thing it was this manager that she'd had a fallout with and then she told me he wasn't her manager anymore he'd been promoted up the company he never spoke to her but she sat there thinking about that time when he had a go at her and that's why she hated her job she went back to work i got a lovely little thank you card that change of shift was massive but she just got used to thinking about that negative when she should have been thinking about all of the positives finally problems well not quite finally but almost problems with partners we get a lot of people who come in who say they're stuck in their relationships and they're really asking us should i leave this person and that's a question we don't go near we let people answer that for themselves so it's really interesting we do the same thing we go through and we ask what attracted you to this person what are the good things what are the happy memories what is it like financially what are all the good things there 
But first of all, we go through all the negatives. And it's usually snoring and bad habits and not going out and doing quality things in life. It's just couples get together and they become a bit stagnant. And then as we focus on all the positives, we say to them, what is it you want more of? So they say, I'd love another holiday back in Scotland. I'd love to go to the beach. I'd like to go to a restaurant once a week. So I say, go back and find a way to do that. And as part of the program, we've got a whole module on doing things with yourself and your friends and your family about things that you like. But making that little shift makes us appreciate the good things in life rather than just focus on the negative ones. So make that list of the positives, make a list of the negatives, go over where you want to go, start changing how you want to think, how you want to feel and start working with that. You can give this some real power. Again, if you look at the videos that we've got, there's some other techniques that you can mix with this. So let's say you've got that, well, first of all, if you've got a negative thought that you want rid of, we've got a little video on tapping where we do this ridiculous thing on the head and it sounds really silly. So if you've got a negative thought of, I don't want to go to work today, take it on the suds of one to 10, how strong is that feeling? And then this feeling of not wanting to go to work I release and let it go and follow that protocol of tapping over the face and take away those negative thoughts so they might start as a 10 take them down to zero follow exactly what we talk about in the video and it helps loads but then most importantly we need to replace that and this is what I like which is a really way of getting positive is take um, take a minute to review those positive statements that you've put there so if it's one that I don't want to go to work it could be you know, we do the positive tapping. Today, I'm going to enjoy going to work. I'm going to enjoy my life and enjoy making this money. I'm going to learn new skills and enjoy the day. And really use some volume to do that because then you're pushing yourself into that positive mental state, which is what all of this is about. Moving from the negative state to the positive one. So use the tapping and that really gives positive um, affirmations and incantations and thoughts a lot more power. The second one is you could um, get out there and use some energy. So it could be today I feel relaxed, peaceful and calm. You can even clap your hands and do some volume and go for a walk. Say it as loud as you want in your head. Say it out loud. Today I feel peaceful, relaxed and calm. And that energy movement is amazing because it changes so, so many things and it really powers it. Now movement is so important because emotion is motion. Motion is also a motion. When we change our physiology, we change our biochemistry, we change everything that's going on in the body. If we go and exercise, we produce loads of endorphins, lots of feel good chemicals. It helps us to lose weight and feel better. And movement is so important. So if we're stuck in a negative rut, that's the time we usually don't want to get out and do something, especially for people who've got depression. I remember when I was bad many, many years ago, I'd lie in bed for hours. But I found that if I got up and went for a walk and got some sunshine, I felt an awful lot better. And then if I did that with some music, I felt even better. And then if I went to the gym and really enjoyed something I was listening to, I felt even better. So one of the best ways to stop that old pattern is to start moving. And it might be you have to find a buddy because this helps to motivate you or three or four. A lot of people have got the girls from work to all go for a walk on a Sunday morning, get down the beach, take the dog, maybe go for a coffee, whatever you need to do. But movement is one of the fastest ways of reducing quickly anxiety, stress and depression. And if you were to do that regularly with something that you love to do, wow, the difference are amazing. The number of times I can count where we've had somebody with severe depression and just couldn't get off the couch from watching the telly. And I've said, just make a point, switch that telly off, hide the remote, get rid of the batteries and just always go for a walk before you watch that TV. It's all catch up now anyway. And the difference that makes is quite amazing, but it is difficult. Um, it can be a difficult thing to do. Another one is looking at the words that we use. It is amazing when you ask people how they are. <laughs> you can hear, first of all, from the words they've got. You know, there's some people, I'm sure you've all done this. You've got some people in your family that you just don't ask them how they are. Because, oh, my big toe sore and my back hurts and my shoulder and they go on about it. But it's also you can notice the tonality. All right, I'm okay. What sort of sayings are those? Okay and all right. However, the language that you use affects you as well. So, some years ago, I was lying on the couch, 
with the man flu, feeling really sorry for myself, thinking about should I go back to bed? I was eating crap as we do. And the phone rang. And I jumped up, thought, new client, picked up the phone. Hello, how you doing? Went all the way through it, came out of it and thought, I feel amazing. Just amazing that because I just jumped into that old, old routine of handling that phone well, that changed my physiology, how I felt, and I felt normal. So this is something you want to do is to make a pact with yourself. If somebody says, how are you doing? You always want to say, amazing, fantastic, feeling really good. And then ask people back that question. Now, I used to work with a guy and I wouldn't, I dare not ask him on a Monday morning. I think he was usually hung over. How are you feeling? Because it was always all right. But if I went in and said, hey, how good are we all feeling today? Oh, we're great. We're getting on. We've got loads of things happening. Wow, just tiny little shifts. So make a promise to yourself when anybody asks you how you are, fantastic, amazing, terrific. It makes such a difference. These are tiny little tools, but they work so well. Now, the final one I'm going to go about, one, is a positive revive. It's quite interesting that we have times in our life where we feel amazing. And then there's other times when we feel quite low. So look again on the, the videos that we've got or go through the anxiety um, relief pack. There's something in there called a positive revive. And this is where you go back to an event when you felt good. And that can be difficult if, you've, um, if you're feeling low. But imagine you go back to a holiday where you felt amazing and you just go through all the visuals. What could you see? What were the colours? What was moving? What was staying still? And then also, what could you hear? What were the nice sounds, the loud sounds, the quiet sounds, the background sounds? And then how did you feel? What was your temperature? What was your energy like, your confidence? And make a mental note of all of that and use the, the exercise. And then just store it. Imagine that you store it, that that was that holiday in Jamaica on that day I felt really good. And then go to the next positive revive. It could be a day on the beach, a day in the garden. It could be the time your first child was born. Go through all of these different things and stack those positive revives all the time. And whenever you notice a negative thought come in, what you want to do is just notice it's there, grab it mentally, throw it away and shout, that's ridiculous. And then bring in that time on that beach in Jamaica and really focus on it and notice what it felt like. And then bring in another one. What was the day on the beach like? What was the day your first child was born? And bring these in. And again, what we're kind of doing is swapping the negative ones and chucking them away and bringing in the positive ones. Now, some of these tools sound a bit ridiculous, but guess what? They really, really work. They've worked for me when I had severe problems and they work for the thousands of clients that we work with that work all the time. So practice those. If you've got any questions, if you've got any comments, leave in the comments section, use the magic link. But these are powerful tools and it works really nicely. To finish off, some years ago, I met an amazing guy called Ed Ludbrook and he did a training that I paid to go to. And Ed used to wear the most pristine suits. He was a great big tall guy. Um, really smart suits but he always had these really loud really loud red socks uh, nothing wrong with red socks not my favorite color but i remember one day somebody asked him in a q and a i said why do you always wear red socks and he said i'm either up or i'm getting up those are the only two thought processes that i've got i'm either up or i'm getting up you might need a trigger like that yourself but do it Thanks for listening. I hope that's been useful. As ever, if you haven't got that free anxiety relief pack, go find the link. It'll be somewhere in the comments or on the page or in my bio. And if you're ready to move forward and get your anxiety sorted faster and quicker and get life moving and motoring, book an assessment call with myself or one of the team and let's get your anxiety sorted.